I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this week's virtual drasha. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, to thank Sammy and Malka Esterson, our Talmud Torah sponsors for the month of Kislev, for dedicating all the shiurim and drashas this month in memory of their parents, Yitzchok Leib ben Aaron Akoin, Rachel Bas Baruch Avram, and Hinda Bas Henech Ephraim, as well as to thank Pam and Menachem Mendel Weissman for dedicating the drasha in memory of. Mr. Irving Weissman, Yitzchok ben Menach Mendel, Zichron Lebrach, on the occasion of his yard site. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, all of the Nishamas will have an Aliyah and the families a Nechama. There's an incredibly dramatic story in this week's parasha, a story that we're all familiar with, and it's the story of the Bechorah. Remember, again, at the beginning of the parasha, although Yaakov Avinu goes ahead and buys the birthright from Esav, nevertheless, as we get towards the middle end of the parasha, Yitzchak Avinu is getting older. He feels that he does not have too much time left in this world, and therefore calls in Esav, his firstborn, his biological firstborn, to tell Esav, prepare for me a meal. I want to give you the brachas before I depart from this world. Rivka hears what's happening. You know the story. She tells Yaakov, quickly, grab your brother's clothing. She prepares a meal, sends Yaakov in masquerading as Esau, and Yaakov receives the brachas from his father. But the Torah tells us that when Yaakov Avinu comes in and confronts his father, Yitzchak suspects something. Yitzchak feels that something is not quite right. He asks, who is this? Yaakov answers, it's Esau. And so ultimately again, Yitzchak Avinu tells Yaakov, Gishana va'amushecha. Come close to me. Why, why, why don't you come here and let me put my hands on you to make, to make sure that it's Esau. It's amazing. Yitzchak Avinu feels there's something not quite right. And so the Pasuk says, this is in Perak of Zayn, Pasuk of Beis, chapter 27, verse 22. Vayigash Yaakov Yitzchak Aviv. Yaakov Avinu comes to Yitzchak, his father, Vayimusheu. And Yitzchak feels, he places his hands on Yaakov and he says, Hakol kol Yaakov v'hayedayim yedei Esav. Yitzchak Avinu still sounds saying, something is wrong here. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. But the hands, the body, the physicality, the clothing, that belongs to Esav. And Rashi HaKadosh says, what does this mean, I call, call Yaakov? What, what exactly was, what exactly was Yitzchak Avinu alluding to? And so Rashi says, call, call Yaakov, the voice is the voice of Yaakov, that's when Yaakov came in, as much as he was masquerading as Esav, he spoke to Yitzchak in a very calm and pleasant way. Please, Father, get up. Please, Father, come and eat. A lot of pleases, a lot of pleasantries. But Esav didn't speak that way. Esav spoke in a harsher, more crude fashion. Yakumabi, get up, father. So Yitzchak Avinu, he hears the pleasantry in the voice of Yaakov, or he hears the pleasantness of speech of Yaakov. Hakol kol Yaakov, v'hayidayim yide Esav. But the body, the physicality, the clothing, that's Esav. So the Baal Shem Tev HaKadosh asks such a profound yet simple question. He says, I don't understand. Yaakov Avinu. You're already masquerading as your brother. You're using his name. You're wearing his clothing. You're telling your father that you are Esau. If you've already done all of this, if you're already playing the charade, you're already playing the game, you're already assuming the identity of your older brother, then why don't you just talk like him as well? It's easy enough to imitate the manner of speech of Esau. Dispense with the pleasantries. Dispense with the pleases. Just talk like your brother. So you have to understand that the, the gig was almost up. Meaning Yitzchak Avinu clearly suspected something. For some reason, he sets his doubts aside and continues to give the bracha. But Lamaisa, practically speaking, he was nervous. He was scared. Something doesn't make sense. Yaakov, you're already, you'll excuse me, deceiving your father. Right? Granted, it's your mother who told you to do it. You're already playing the charade. You're already playing dress up. You're already dressing, assuming the identity, telling your father that it's you, that it's Esau. So finish it up. Finish it up. Do it correctly. Imitate the speech of your brother as well and let the charade be complete. So Yaakov is willing to, talk, to, 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 uh, to identify as his brother. He's willing to go ahead and wear the clothing of his brother. He's willing to go ahead and tell his father that he is Esau, but he's not willing to talk like Esau. So the Baal says, what's going on over here? What's the Pshat? And the Baal says, something absolutely amazing. A profound insight, not just into the parasha, but a profound life insight as well. See, Yaakov Avinu is in a difficult predicament. And he understood that his mother 
understood the totality of events that were unfolding over here. You see, sometimes life requires us to accommodate circumstances. Sometimes I have to make changes in myself because there's a life situation that arises and I have to adapt. And sometimes the way I have to adapt is I have to change certain things about myself. That, that's just the way that it works. I have to change certain personality traits. I have to change certain behaviors. I have to even sometimes change certain personal rituals because I have to accomplish something bigger in life. You know, Yaakov was the Isha MS. He was the man of truth. Yet to a certain degree, he had to set aside MS in order to go ahead and comply with his mother's wishes and in order to go ahead and take really that which was rightfully his. He bought the Bechor from Esau. So life calls upon us sometimes to adapt. And adapting means that, yes, sometimes I even have to change certain things about myself. So Yaakov Avinu said, you're right, mom, I'm going to listen. I'm going to change my clothing. I'm even going to change my name. I'm even going to assume the identity of Esav. But you know what? I can't change everything about me. Because if I have to change everything about me, if I have to adapt in such a dramatic way, then there is no longer a me. If I have to change everything about myself in order to adapt to the situation, in order to suit your expectations, then there is no longer a me. There's nothing left to me. So I'll dress like Esav. I'll take the name of Esav. I'll approach my father pretending that I'm Esav. But I can't speak like Esav. Because the moment I speak like Esav, there is no longer a Yaakov. The moment I give up that last vestige of self, that last thing, that last part of me, there is nothing of me left anymore. And what an incredible life lesson. Because often in life we have to adapt. And this, is, this happens all of the time. Think about this in a different context. Sometimes in my career, I have to go ahead and adapt. And sometimes I have to even adapt certain religious practices. Sometimes even certain things that maybe I mock, but I'm careful with when I'm by myself. Maybe I'm not always able to bring all of them into my work life, it happens. Everybody has to adapt in some ways. Sometimes in relationships, right? In a marriage, there may be things about my personality, about me, that are not good for my marriage. So I have to change those things. I have to adapt myself in order to be able to be a good husband. Same thing with being a father. Same thing in any life relationship. Same thing with just interacting with people, you know? Sometimes a person might say, you know, I really pride myself in saying it like it is, telling it like it is, speaking my mind. You could do that, you're just not going to have a lot of friends. And you're just not really going to have people who want, because that's nice if you're Mama Sha'isha MS, you just want to speak your mind. If you really want to interact with other people, you have to temper that a little bit. There's a time to speak your mind, and even when you speak your mind, there's a way, there's a manner in which you speak your mind. So we adapt all the time, and we change things about ourselves all of the time. But at a certain point, I have to draw the line. And I have to say, if I have to remake myself, in the image that you want me to be in, then there's no longer anything left of me. I'm happy to adapt, and I'm happy to evolve, and I'm happy to change, and I'm happy to be mavater, I'm happy to yield, I'm happy to give in. But if I give in on everything, if I yield on everything, if I adapt everything, then I become a nothing. Life is all about trying to figure out what can you yield on, but what, have to, what has to remain the immutable pillars of my identity. What are the things about me? What are the things about my life? What are the things about my personality, my religious identity, my spiritual personality that are immutable, that cannot change? There are so many things that I could adapt, but there are certain things which must remain immutable. And identifying which items fall into which category is the greatest challenge in life. And this was the struggle of Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu, the whole thing almost blew up. Why? Because Yaakov Avinu wouldn't change the way he spoke. I, but come on. Come on. If you're going to do it, then do it right. You're going to impersonate Ye Esau. Then don't just put on his clothing. and Don't just assume his name. But speak like he was going to speak also. And Yaakov Avinu said, if I do that, 
if I give up all of me, if I change everything, then you know what? I am Esav. Then there's no longer a Yaakov. In life, there has to be a piece of me that remains immutable, unchangeable, and fixed. There must be values that I am not willing to compromise. They become Yaharig Bal Yavor. I won't give it up. No matter what, I won't give it up. And isn't this what all of life is about? Right? Again, not to be repetitive, but so many of us, we face this in the workplace. There are challenges that come up all the time in the workplace. And yes, sometimes, you know, a person might be makbid on my machronim. They might be always wash my machronim. They might wash before the bench. You know what? It could be that you're at the business dinner and I don't know, maybe, 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 maybe my machronim is not, maybe you just don't feel comfortable. Okay. So sometimes I might have to give up my machronim for, for arguments, not minimizing the importance of my machronim, just using it for illustrative purposes that sometimes you have to yield on certain things. And again, going back to the example of marriage, if you want to have a successful marriage, you must be willing to to adapt. You must be willing to change. Those who enter marriage saying, love it or leave it, this is who I am, that marriage, that relationship is doomed for failure. And not just that marriage, but any subsequent marriage also. Marriage is all about adapting. I got it. There are things about me that I think are just fine, but that my wife finds quite irritating. So my job is to adapt. My job is to change. But if my spouse demands of me to change everything about myself, that's also unhealthy. That's not a normal relationship because then you're asking me to no longer be me. So life is all about identifying these two categories. What are the things about me? What are the aspects of my personality? What are the pillars of my religious identity that have to remain fixed and immutable? And what are the things that I could change? Yaakov Avinu was willing to give up or to change, to adapt everything. But when it came to how he spoke, when it came to the way he interacted with his father, I'm sorry, that's immutable. That's unchangeable. In that way, I'll never mimic Esav. In our lives, it's a profound exercise to write down on a piece of paper, what are my core values? What are the things that I will never, ever compromise? What are the things which make me, me? What are the pillars of my identity that if they erode, I cease to exist? And then on the other side, what are all of the things for which I have the ability to yield, for which I have the ability to compromise, for which I have the ability to accommodate, for which I have the ability to be mevater? Those who are able to find that perfect balance, knowing when to yield and knowing when to stand your ground, gain a Yaakov Avinu strength, to be able to navigate even the most difficult of circumstances. Wishing everyone a good and Erev Shabbos and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.